Hello, Doctor. Hi. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. So, I wanted to discuss and know about my menstrual issues. Uh, I've been treated by you for that and I would like to know more information about the same. I had a long, say, uh, last year in the month of March, I had a long bleeding, like say 20 days a month and it was like, I couldn't stand it actually. So when I came to you, you gave me that, you, you, I underwent a scan and everything and you're saying it's endometriosis, the uterus is uh, very bulky, it's very thick and everything. I want to know more information about the same actually. Sure. So as you rightly said, abnormal bleeding which can happen, um, happens due to various reasons. So when do we call it abnormal bleeding? If somebody has a cycle which is irregular, okay. say lesser than 23 days cycle duration okay. or more than 35 days cycle duration as far as the interval is concerned okay. or if somebody bleeds beyond 7 days okay. of periods, okay. that is amounting to irregular cycles or abnormal uterine bleeding. Okay. Now abnormal uterine bleeding can be due to various causes, something to do with the uterus or structure okay. or function or something in the ovaries okay. or due to a condition due to hormonal disturbance say for example thyroid issues so anybody who walks into the clinic like mm -hmm. uh, I know what you did last year mm -hmm. if somebody has this kind of cycle duration it can make them very tired it can definitely interfere with the routine activity which exactly. they are otherwise doing people tend to stop their gym activity or stop going to do an exercise or even find it extremely exhausting. They can develop rashes in the gentle area to the constant usage of sanitary napkin and become anemic. And that can also have physical effects like shortness of breath while climbing stairs or feeling a bit dizzy when they're over exhausted. Right. And sleep disturbances. So it's very important to treat it straight away so that the long lasting effects on the body does not leave a ill health to the candidate. So which is why we did few tests to yes. find out are we dealing with a local structural problem, mm -hmm. is there any hormonal disturbance which we need to correct, is the person anemic. I'm sure okay. we've done, done the yes, same that's thing. Right. And this is the usual protocol which we would like to follow for anybody okay. of any age group who comes So there can be three reasons why there is a Exactly. Yeah. Just treating it symptomatically is one thing. But treating the root cause is very, very important. Yes, addressing the root So it cause. doesn't happen yet again. Yes. Correct. So is it something related to the age or is it, it can happen to anybody of any age or how is it actually? It, it, actually, it can happen at any age. But the causative reasons what leads to the abnormal uterine bleeding varies according to the age group. Okay. Say if somebody has attained menarche, they've just attained their periods at puberty mm -hmm. and comes within two years with, to me with abnormal uterine bleeding. A 15 year old girl mm -hmm. bleeding for 15 days, not able to attend school, okay. stops her PE classes because she's very uncomfortable, okay. mother is very worried, brings her in. Okay. That's a usual scenario. Okay. The problem could be due to the immaturity of the ovarian axis mm -hmm. and the hormonal disturbance due to that okay. and thereby this problem. Okay. All that I need to do at that point mm -hmm. is reassure her, make sure she's not becoming anemic, just check for her thyroid problem mm -hmm. and also whether the clotting mechanism is okay because the clotting disturbance could be presenting as the first episode of heavy bleeding in her okay. when she attends menarche. That itself is suffice. Give her some iron supplementation, reassure the mother and the daughter that this will pass away within two years of getting her periods, make sure she's of an optimal weight and not weight, gaining weight and that should settle. So everything, all the menstrual disturbances, it's very addressable actually. Absolutely. It's very addressable. Once we know the root cause, it can be only a medication and everything. Because when I came and I was very worried to be very honest, Naturally. I was very worried, uh, is it anything to do with, am, am I going to lose my uterus or anything? I was very panicked to be very honest, I was very panicked. Am I already into that state or something like that? But the reassurance what you gave and understanding the root cause and addressing the issue without losing the organ, that gave me a lot of self-confidence. I had a better lifestyle and everything. So what are the ways in which, say, if you are anemic, it's going to be iron. Uh, what are the reasons, what are the various kinds of treatment for the same? Very true. As you rightly put in, women 
especially the middle age group, the women they have irregular cycles or heavy bleeding. It's a fixed notion in the minds and probably from here, the say, society, from yeah. whoever, the neighbors or the kids and kids, exactly. they drive the point that you will have to have a hysterectomy or lose the organ. Oh, yeah. the, the primary aim in abnormal uterine bleeding or the cornerstone of treatment is to conserve the organ. How much ever possible. Yeah. Of course, if there is an indication where there is a suspicion of cancer and things like that, we will not have a choice but to do a hysterectomy. That's besides the point. Yeah. But if it's purely due to something like a bulky uterus and there is no hint of any suspicion of cancer and it's a hormonal disturbance, we should at any cost be conserving the uterus and not removing it. Yeah. And every single step should be taken to avoid an unnecessary hysterectomy. If That's this true. message reaches out to the public, exactly. I think we have done our duty. Exactly. So, apart from uh, Beti Bachao, I think we should start a uterus Bachao program exactly. as well. Because unindicated hysterectomy or uh, hysterectomy done for very soft indications mm -hmm. has long-term health consequences. Yeah, I very well remember the story, what you are saying about the uh, umbrella. Um, correct. Yeah. I'm glad you remembered it. Yeah. You know, I'd be glad if you could tell what I... Yeah, what the doctor was telling me, I was very in a panic mode when I came and I was asking to a lot of outside and uh, people were saying that, uh, am I going to lose the organ? And then you said, it's just like the uterus, it's just like how the top of the umbrella is there. It is holding on to all the pins. So unnecessarily, if you remove the pin, everything becomes loose and long term, the organs will Absolutely. So that makes absolute sense why we should preserve the organ. Absolutely. If there is no indication or it's a soft indication can be managed medically, why not? And, and I very regret the fact that people think it's a redundant organ, especially after yeah. having children exactly. or stop having periods. Actually not. The most important function of the uterus is offer support to the pelvic floor muscles, the bladder and the rectum and the associated ligaments. If that is not there, there will be weakening of the bladder and can lead on to incontinence problems in the future. As we get older, so it's very, very important to conserve the uterus if it's feasible to do so. Correct. And that leads, leads on to that question which you asked about the treatment methods which we can use. Now, not all will need a hysterectomy. Okay. We do have a hormone releasing coil called um, Marina coil which we can insert inside the uterine cavity. It's something like a copper tree, but as unlike the copper tree, it does not cause heavy periods. In fact, reduces the periods. Okay. One third of the people can stop having periods or will have only spotting, mm -hmm. and it acts as a contraceptive too. As, uh, as you know, it works for five years, and you can easily remove it and reinsert another one. And it acts as a protective mechanism inside the womb cavity, mm -hmm. preventing thickening of the womb cavity, and thereby preventing the risk of endometrial or uterine cancer. So it has got multifaceted benefits and it's a fantastic promising treatment for the abnormal uterine bleeding, especially in the reproductive age group. So how is the reach of the coin, what you're talking about, around the world, around India or outside India? So do, I, do we need to go for an expert for doing this or is any uh, gynecologist we can ask that can we do this or how do we go about it? Yeah, it's very much prevalent in the world for the last 25 years. As usual in any medical research, the Scandinavian countries started using it and has been there in vogue since 1995 to be honest. And nowadays people People are using it a lot um, in India and it is a very good contraceptive and very good treatment for abnormal uterine bleeding. People however have this concept that uh, periods have to be on dot, on exactly. the mark. Yeah. There is no rule as it's going to be 28 days every time and spotting is not considered as a period. But unfortunately due to the cultural practices and the religious restrictions which people follow in our society people can find the unscheduled spotting which can happen with Marina in the first three to six months as I yeah, counseled yeah, you yeah. that it can be a detriment for people to embrace this particular type of treatment but proper counseling reassuring them that this is only an adverse effect for just temporary yeah. and it's not having any kind of consequence on their body that will go a long way in people continuing with the treatment and reaping the benefit of the same. That's 
perfectly actually. The first three months it was very hard for me just to make sure am I all right. Just the reassurance what you gave me gave me a lot of confidence. It has been more than a year now. It's going to be close to a year and I feel so blissful. My lifestyle, the way I look at the life, I'm, I don't say no to anything. I'm always active and my mood is off and everything. I am having a better quality of life. Absolutely. I feel so good about it actually. Fantastic. Thank you so much Dr. Pleasure.